Um, I'm going to start our third course for the AMAC and GCR group. We are happy uh, really uh, to have uh, these activities with all our attendees and participants from MENA region and uh, behind, uh, almost from all over the world. We have more than 500 participants. So uh, just to welcome all of you, I don't know uh, my co-chair, Dr. Chowki Bazarbashi, uh, maybe he couldn't be with us to co-chair this session with me. So just some uh, notes before we start that uh, this activity is recorded and will be shared on LFS YouTube channel. And also will be sent to you uh, this uh, uh, YouTube uh, with your certificate. Uh, the second thing that uh, you can raise the hand for the participants and you will get the chance to and the privilege to talk your uh, with us and to share your question. The third thing if you uh, don't want to share uh, to raise your hand you can uh, do your question and answer uh, on the written and the section of the Q and uh, A section. Uh, we'll start our activity welcoming all the participants and thanking all the companies uh, sponsoring this activity, uh, Sanofi, Biologics, and Merck. Um, our speakers uh, for today will start with Dr. Ala, Shams Ala Kandil, uh, Professor Ala Kandil is going to talk about the frontline treatment in metastatic pancreatic carcinoma. How to choose? Please, Dr. Ala, floor is yours. Okay. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Sami and Professor Fadi Farahat for giving me the opportunity, and I'd like to uh, welcome you, everybody. So, as per the title given to me, we'll try to cover this. Uh, I would say hard subject, a very short introduction. Okay. Well, this is a, a, a problem actually that's quite common. It's something like the 12th most common cancer in the States uh, with something like 54,000 steam cases each year with a lifetime risk of 1.5 years and an old age, median age of diagnosis is 70 years. Okay, the majority of patients with localized pancreatic cancer who undergo surgery with or without adjuvant therapy will unfortunately develop a metastatic disease thereafter, suggesting that surgery alone is not sufficient to cure micro-metastatic disease after Dr. Dr. Ala, Dr. Ala, the echo is very loud. I'm going to put the earphones like I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on mobile. Next slide, please. Okay, so actually, you're, everybody's aware of the American Joint Committee uh, Cancer Staging System for Pancreatic Cancer, and today we're talking about patients with M1 disease, metastatic disease. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, as we're talking about that, so we, we can see uh, just below the uh, very low part of the slide that. Uh, the stage four patients have a median survival of only eight months, which is very unfortunate for them. And unfortunately, again, patients with advanced stage disease account for three fourths of the patients, as stage four disease represents something like 52% of the cases. Okay, what we're talking about today in our topic is mainly patients with metastatic disease that has spread to other organs, namely stage four B. Okay, still for patients with locally advanced disease, uh, 
that some of them actually remain with locally advanced disease with non-metastatic disease. As data from autopsy patients with locally advanced yeah. disease showed that something like 30% of those patients died without any evidence of distant metastasis thereafter. We consider patients with uh, 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 metastatic pancreatic uh, cancer as incurable. However, with the new regimens that we have, we have a little bit more of uh, uh, less pro better progression-free survival and improved quality of life. For a long time, since the early 80s up to the 90s, actually, 5-FU was the main line of treatment for those patients with a median survival with something like only 6 However, after the landmark study that was published in 1997, gemcitabine came to stand for a long period of time, almost a decade or so, to be the first line for patients with metastatic uh, 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 pancreatic cancer. And that was proved in many stage three uh, 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 randomized trials. Okay, and that was the conclusion of the main trial, Boris et al., and that many trials there followed that gemcitabine is more effective than 5-FU in alleviation of some disease-related symptoms in patients with advanced disease and also confers a modest survival advantage over treatment with 5-FU. So the standard of care changed from 5-FU uh, uh, to gemcitabine. And thereafter, as we see from that study, Actually, the use of chemotherapy, systemic chemotherapy in the treating of those patients went on and on to treat more patients. This is a neat trial done from the cancer data registry showing how patients were increased uh, uh, from uh, the 2000 uh, up to the 2011 years. So actually that encouraged more physicians and oncologists to treat patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer. We came to one regimen. Uh, I guess everybody is aware of it, the so-called Polverinex versus gemcitabine, which was the standard of care in metastatic breast cancer, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And that was a multi-center phase one trial. However, most importantly, that was patients tried in this trial with very good performance status, as you can see. Okay, and this is the design of the trial for Fironox, as everybody knows, include oxaliplatin, ID if you can, 5-FU, bolus, and continuous infusion, and the control arm was gemcitabine. And the data speaks for itself. There was better median overall survival significantly for the Fulfurinox over gemcitabine, and the same for progression-free survival. And you can see that in the hazard ratio, 0.57, almost 43% did benefit in terms of overall survival, and 0.47, more than 50% did benefit in terms of progression-free survival. And that was a new standard of care, however, that didn't come without a price because Fulfurinox was more toxic than from cytabine as a single agent. And that was the conclusion actually, uh, and it tells that you can have better survival advantage, however, with increased toxicity, but it, this is a regimen that has to go only for patients with good performance status. So on the basis of this trial uh, that was published in 2011, Porphyronox was considered as one standard option for patients with metastatic Breast cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, I'm sorry. Another major uh, improvement came out with the regimen of uh, napaclitaxel and gemcitabine, again published two years later. And this is actually the design of the trial gemcitabine plus napaclitaxel, and the control arm again was gemcitabine. Okay. You can see again uh, a better overall survival for the combination of napaclitaxel and gemcitabine and 5 few and less uh, improvement uh, uh, than the fulforinox, as you can see per the hazard ratio, it's only 0.72 as opposed to uh, 0.57. And for the progression-free survival, it's still there, but only for about 30% of the patients. So less improvement as compared to fulforinox, but uh, it, it's less toxic, as we, you will see in a minute. Sex. And this is the conclusion of the trial. Uh, it's tell us actually there is improvement in overall survival and progression-free survival. However, the rate of peripheral neuropathy and myelosuppression were increased. Thereafter, other 
many combinations, trying an ENT EGFR like erlotinib, prosim cytabine, published in the year 2007. However, with no actually major statistically improvement, and it, yes, it's less toxic, and also other major trials, including platinum analogs, did try in different combinations, however, with no real benefit over the two main regimens that showed real benefit for Furinox and NAPAC, Litaxel, and Gemcitabine. So in second line, there is a very famous uh, uh, regimen, the so-called OFF, uh, which is actually was tried plus best supportive care versus best supportive care. And it includes oxaliplatin, fulfenic uh, acid, ful and folinic acid, and 5-FU. And actually, OFF significantly pro showed prolonged survival time compared to best uh, uh, supportive care. So this is actually can be done in a second line, however, only to a certain group of patients, actually. So this is a problem that we face in the clinic every day. I mean, you have uh, some certain degree of response to start with, and then your patient become refractory or resistant. So you have to consider more than one factor. What was the regimen the patient received in the first line? What are the residual toxicities from the first line therapy? And what is the performance status at the point of switching? These are very important factors that you like. For an example, patient, you have a patient that already received Fulforinox, for, for which might switch to gemcitabine based regimen, either as a mono or part of combination as gem napaclitaxel, depending again on the degree of neuropathy. This is something you have to keep in mind. Conversely, uh, uh, vice versa. Patients who started on gem napaclitaxel may subsequently be switched to a full, free, uh, full fluoropyrimidine based regimen, such as 5 fu leucovorin, uh, nanoliposomal, irinoticano, or folfox, or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's something like the art of changing regimens according to the symptoms and the patient tolerability the previous regimen gave. So, napaclitaxel plus gem cytabine result is similar overall survival versus fulfurnox, uh, but unfortunately, which one? To treat, which one to choice? There's never been a head to head comparison, and this is very unfortunate. So it remains a judgment call for the physician. And you might say that Falteronox has a somewhat better overall survival and progression free survival, which is true, but with a higher price. You have to be very cautious because the data came only from patients with very good performance status, as opposed to the trial of uh, an app, Paclitaxel, and uh, gemcitabine, you have patients actually with, with a little bit mild performance status as patients was as low as 70 Carnoffice scale was included in the gem. We don't have any predictive biomarkers, unfortunately, to lead us to choose one of these regimens. This is very unfortunate. So you would go with the clinical findings you always use, like age, performance status, organ functions, if the patient has or doesn't have any comorbidities, the patient preference, differences in safety profile, schedule of administration, and logistics experts. And these are all important factors, actually. But both are considered to be a very good first-line options for patients with metastatic uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. Okay? So do we need molecular profiling in pancreatic cancer? It seems like that will work but needs some more uh, research and some more data. What are we looking for? Actually, the molecular profile might give us some actionable limitations for which targeted therapy can be done. And these targeted therapies can be used either alone or with the standard chemotherapeutic agents. You can see here, this is a small study actually, but actually very neat, showing that you can have a better outcome with patients with highly actionable uh, matched therapy is there with matched therapy. And if those patients, the same patients, have highly actionable mutations with no matched therapy, they have a very uh, poor outcome. And in between are patients with no highly actionable mutations. So it makes a difference that you can find uh, an actionable mutation and you have a treatment for it. What are you looking for? You're looking for immunogenic, like uh, uh, microsatellite instability, mismatch repair. You can maybe try immune checkpoint inhibitors, you look in something like DNA damage or problems in repair, BRCA1, PAL2, ATM, or rare genetic abnormalities like the TRK fusion.
patients. These are things you can look for. And there is some evidence from immunotherapy using pembrolizumab in patients with microsatellite instability. However, these are very uh, small trials actually, but can give you a glimpse that immunotherapy might be beneficial. The same actually for patients with TRK fusion. If you have that, this is only in a trial, including only one patient with pancreatic cancer. However, uh, the rest of the patients mainly were sarcoma patients, but it's a proof of concept. You might be able to uh, uh, find uh, an outcome. Now we come to the BRCA part. <clears throat> if patients with BRCA mutated pancreatic cancer are tried, uh, and you can see actually those patients tried with platinum chemotherapy compounds do better actually than patients who don't have BRCA, do, do, do not try with platinum chemotherapy regimens. As you know that platinum can cause inter and intrastrand breaks, and those pro patients have problems with the repair of the DNA. So this is another one, uh, uh, another important trial using the PARB inhibitor, uh, Olaparib versus placebo as a maintenance in patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer that already showed response to uh, uh, platinum or cis-platinum-based therapy. And you can see there is an improvement in the COLO trial in terms of progression, free survival, and response with a good hazard ratio, 0.53, meaning 47% of the patients did benefit in terms of progression free survival by the use of PARP inhibitor Olaparib, which is actually something that you might consider for patients. To end, last two couple of slides, we have plenty of regimens. However, we would, I hope you all agree that Forturinox and Napaclitaxel gemcitabine are the best uh, first line treatment for those patients. And you should consider them if you can, and maybe maintenance chemotherapy in the patients who do respond well for at least six months, you can go by other less uh, toxic regimen. You might go in patients with uh, a deficiency in repair by PARP inhibitors. The other view to be very selective. These are other uh, recommended regimens, plenty of regimens. I will definitely not go uh, through them all. And I'd like to thank you all for that. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ala, for the comprehensive lecture, and thank you uh, to be sticking to the time. So uh, now we have the floor for our panelists for the discussion. We have Dr. Dr. Nisreen Ishraiti um, from uh, Tunisia, and we have Dr. Rafid Aboud uh, from Iraq, from the Basra al-Iraq. Uh, please, the floor is yours for the discussion and comments. Thank you. مساء الخير مساء الخير مساء النور كيف الصحه شكرا للدعوه وشكرا استاذ سامي الخطيب شكرا دكتور علاء على المحاضره شو لا حضرتك شكرا شكرا لحضرتك ار ذير اني كويشن فور فروم ذا اودينس يس يس اي هاف ا كويشن هلو يس 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 Yes, this is Dr. Yunus from uh, Lebanon. Uh, I have a question regarding the first line. Uh, you know, historically, uh, Forfarinox was supposed to be better than uh, uh, Gem Abraxane. <clears throat> but in the last ASCO, the uh, phase two trial, the SWOG uh, S1505, uh, showed comparable efficacy regarding the uh, overall survival in the new adjuvant setting. And actually, this uh, was the first uh, trial to compare uh, modified Fulfernox versus uh, Abraxane uh, Genzar. So do you think that this would change the practice and uh, to make it uh, these protocols are comparable uh, together? OK. This is an excellent question, actually. I mean, they're both good candidates for treating patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer. But the idea as well is when to choose this or that. It, it, the toxicity profile of Fulfurinox actually is, is quite high. And if you would like to choose that, you would like to choose it for younger patients with really good performance status. Because I guess, I hope everybody agrees with me that when you see the results in your hands in the clinic, Fulfurinox really works well. For patients who are not like that, 
still James Aitabin and Napak Taksel. But unfortunately, I don't know about uh, you guys in all the countries. Napak Taksel, for instance, is not present in Egypt. I don't know about other countries. Is it, is it uh, it's not uh, available for all of you? Even yes, in yes. Uh, students, uh, we don't have, we don't have it. it in Tunis. No. Okay. Sorry. We don't have we it have in it. Egypt, we unfortunately. Have it in Lebanon. We have it in Lebanon. You have it in Lebanon. Okay. In Iraq, in the private sector only. Just in the okay. private sector. The problem with the data that presented in the ASCO, it is uh, a data for uh, newly diagnosed, not post-treatment uh, or metastatic uh, uh, why disease with the performance that we are seeing on daily life. The second issue is, uh, as Ahmed, Dr. Yunus said, uh, maybe Abraxan Jimzar has, you can con conclude that's a better outcome because the pathologic complete response is 40% in the data with uh, Abraxan uh, Jimzar. So uh, it has to be a direct uh, comparison Although the final conclusion from the uh, presenter said we cannot conclude uh, that uh, uh, Abraxan Jimzar is better than uh, Folfrinox. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have another question. I see another question. Yes. Yeah, any question? Please. Yes, there is a question from Dr. Basim Al Bahrani. Mm -hmm. Please, can you check it? It's uh, saying your view on using liposomal iron account with 5FU. Is it based on Napoli 1 clinical trial? Dr. Andy? Can, 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 can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I will send it to answer live. So, uh, uh, you do and using liposomal aeronauticum with 5 of you based on Napoli 1 <laughs> question. Yeah, this, I mean, if, if he's, the question is, is this is an option? Yes, there is an option. We have data on that. But again, the availability of uh, nanoliposomal aeronauticum is not that. I mean, it's diff difficult. Yeah. I'd like to hear from Dr. Ali Shamsuddin about his opinion on that. Uh, we, don't we don't have it in Lebanon also. Okay. Okay. We don't have experience, but this is okay. the second line approved, uh, FDA approved regime. Yes. Uh, I have a question to Dr. Ala. Good. Yes. Uh, do you have any idea about third line treatment for those with pancreatic cancer? I know most of those patients who are passing first and second line uh, who have a poor performance status, but some of people still, they can't tolerate the treatment and chemotherapy. Any, any suggestion for those patients with the, in the third line, line treatment for pancreatic cancer? Well, I mean, it depends according to the, the, the disease situation and the patient performance status. I mean, if you, if you don't think that best supportive care is the best, you might go with oral uh, fluor, uh, fluorouracil like capricitabine or something like that. But I mean, many of the patients actually won't go for a third line treatment. Thank you. I think there is also a question about PARP inhibitors from pancreatic yes. cancer. Yes. Go ahead. No, that's the question. Misreen, can you hear me? There is a question someone is asking. Any data about PARP inhibitors? Yes, I presented yes. that actually. There is data for all Farib actually as a maintenance therapy in patients who already responded well to cisplatinum-based uh, regimens, actually. And there is an improvement in terms of progression free survival. Yes, there is. Breaka, which, which are BRCA mutated, of course. Yes. Most, yes. yes. There is another question. Uh, can you see it, Nisreen? In the presence of molecular alteration, which regimen you prefer in first line? What kind of molecular alterations? Uh, the question is asked by someone from the audience. The question yes. is, is like that, actually. Yeah, I mean, if you have to uh, identify what, kind, what type of molecular alteration you're talking about. If it's I like think that the, um, they mean something like if you have BRCA1 or 2 mutation. 
Yeah. Uh, will your first line ch be changed? Mm, uh, yeah, I that's think, the question. I think, I yeah. think uh, will be will be right. inclu included in the lecture mm -hmm. of Dr. Ali Shamsid. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank you. I I think uh, we we'll stop here. The questions. Just I would like to ask the participants that uh, the questions will be answered at the end of uh, uh, the lectures, so we can take more time. Now, it's my pleasure to present our uh, well-known and friend also, Dr. Ali Shamsuddin. He, he is going to talk about the updates in the treatment of airline metastasis cancer. Dr. Ali, Dr. Ali, the floor is here. Can we have the slides full screen? Yes. Yes, you have it. Okay. So thank you for the invitation, uh, Dr. Farhad, Dr. Khatib. Uh, uh, can you give uh, the control? I don't have the control. Okay, this is my disclosures. I don't have the control. <laughs> so what influence treatment in metastatic colorectal is, uh, cancer is several issues. <laughs> We have the patient characteristics and we have also the tumor characteristics. We have the molecular characteristics and the patient uh, preference. As you can see here, uh, there are certain issues that we take uh, uh, in consideration when we decide for the first line treatment. Uh, I will categorize uh, patients with metastatic colorectal for the first uh, line treatment on several categories. So the first uh, selection for an optimal treatment will select uh, those all comers, all comers without any specifics. So we'll talk about the chemotherapy. Is there any difference between the full FOX and full theory as upfront, as you can see from the Tornigan trial early in 2000? And four, there is no difference between the full FOX and full FIDI as upfront or subsequent therapy as outcome as survival. And if you add bevacizumab map to uh, the full FOX or full theory, if there are any difference, again, there is no difference between both categories, whether you use it first or second line. In the maintenance uh, uh, phase after the induction, and this is from Cairo 3 trial, as you can see here, after induction chemotherapy, whether to give uh, maintenance therapy with skepsitabine and BAVA versus observation, you can see the maintenance therapy gave a better outcome in uh, relation to uh, progression-free survival one and progression-free survival two beside the time to uh, second uh, uh, disease progression. So, uh, uh, the use of the mental therapy after induction will improve uh, the disease free either in the first time or in the second time, but there is no impact on overall survival. What about the triplet therapy in uh, uh, colorectal cancer uh, first line? As you can see from all these trials, the Congo, the Horde, the Olivia, and the Tribe, all these trials. Uh, uh, three of them are phase three randomized trial. You can see there is significant improvement in the primary endpoint, mainly the progression-free survival, and also subsequently improvement in overall response rate, especially the TRIBE trial, as you can see, and also the overall survival. Uh, the uh, recent data that presented last year in the ASCO, the TRIBE 2, try to answer a question between using the triplet upfront or the doublet upfront followed by uh, uh, after we uh, for eight cycle, then a risk period, then after progression, we reintroduce the same regimen. So full foxiri beva eight cycle, followed by rest period upon progression, another full foxiri beva for eight cycles, 
followed by 5FU BEVA versus full Fox BEVA, then full Fox BEVA and 5FU BEVA. And the primary endpoint was progression-free survival too. As you can see, the trial was uh, positive for the primary endpoint with progression-free survival to 19.1 versus 17.5 months and other issues 0.74 significant p-value. This trial also showed uh, uh, a significant improvement in survival, as you can see a secondary endpoint, and also the conclusion beside the improvement in outcome and positive trial, but there is an increase in the toxicity. So it is uh, 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 this uh, folfoxiri induction followed by folfoxiri upon relapse is tailored for a patient with a good performance, fat individual, maybe for the right side that we need the more responses and maybe for the RAS patients mutated uh, uh, cancers. This is an abstract presented recently in the ASCO 2020. As you can see, a meta-analysis from a five randomized uh, trial, the the uh, chart trial, the Olivia and this team beside the two tribe trials, uh, gathering more than 600 uh, patients in the meta-analysis and comparing the triplet with Fulfir versus uh, Fulfoxiri with Beva versus the doublets. And the doublet here is 70% of the patient used Fulfox with Beva and 30% used Fulfiri Beva. The primary endpoint of the metanus was overall survival. As you can see, there is significant improvement in the overall survival. And the secondary is progression-free survival, uh, disease-free survival, also in, uh, improved with overall response. And what is the drawback of the trial as a conclusion that this uh, uh, improvement outcome of survival did not show the same result in patient with BRAF mutation? The second category of patient, those with the RAS wild, BRF wild, microsatellite stable patient, what to do for them? It depends, the question. It depends whether the patient you need to have a rapid response and shrinkage, then conversion to resectability. This is number one question. And according to that, whether which target therapy you have to choose, to choose. This depends on the response rate if you want a rapid response. And if you can see, these are the uh, uh, summary of all randomized trials from the use of anti-epidermal growth factor, mainly the prime, the crystal. The incremental increase in response rate is much higher with the anti-epidermal growth factor, as you can see, 13%, 27% while the use of anti-VHF in the upfront, specifically from the big randomized trial, the NO16966 trial, showed a zero incremental increase with the use of BEVA with uh, chemotherapy upfront. While the increase here, as you can see, plus eight or 9% is only when you use capsitabine, not with the combination just capsitabine beva versus capsitabine as the AVIX trial. So the incremental more with the response rate with the, uh, with the anti-epidermal growth factor. And in this phase two uh, randomized trial, you can see also patient with unresectable liver metas using the chemotherapy plus anti-epidermal growth factor cetuximab gave a better outcome as a response rate, R0 section overall survival, three overall survival and overall uh, patients uh, with surgery. As you can see, versus patient with no surgery, the, there is a borderline improvement is patient with no surgery, but still numerically in, in, in favor of the use of the chemotherapy plus cetuximab. Uh, in the crystal trial, as you can see, Fulfiri Sotixima versus Fulfiri, patient with liver limited disease showed the same outcome with increased response in the combination of uh, Fulfiri plus Sotixima versus Fulfiri. As you can see here, with the R0 resection, much, much higher than the patients with uh, chemotherapy alone. And in the meta analysis, in the meta analysis, for all RAS wild patients, when we have the trial for head-to-head -head comparison, which are the FIRE, PEAK, and CLGB, it showed a significant improvement in the 
response rate with the p-value of uh, 0 0.004. If the second question, if I have a patient with a wild RAS and MSS, BRAF wild also, but our aim is non-resectable. Our aim is to increase progression-free and overall survival. What are the data here? Here we have to examine all the data with the use of BEVA in Oran Dumice and see the outcome of these patients. As you can see from the randomized trials, and we have the registry trial here. The only randomized trial is the uh, IO trial, which is the biggest one, and the IFL trial. And the second one is the AVIX. And you can see from the big randomized trial, 1,400 patients, there is no improvement in overall survival or response rate, just the progression-free survival, as you can see. The only trial that showed a survival improvement in the IFL, which we don't use it now as uh, uh, the weekly IR unit, you can it drop this trial. And the AVEX again shows improvement in the progression free survival as primary endpoint. While this trial, the pooled analysis, is a registry trial and not randomized trial. Well, if you can see the randomized trial with the use of chemo and anti epidermal growth factor. What about the overall survival? You can see there is always incremental increase in overall survival with the use of the anti-epidermal growth factor, the prime 5.6 months in the crystal 8.2 months in the fire 8.1 months in the peak 12.4 months, and even in the CLGB, although it was not significant, but it is 3.5 months. And again, in the meta-analysis of all as wild patients that include more than 2,000 patients, there is a significant improvement in overall survival when you use the anti-epidermal growth factor of schema versus anti-VHF with a p-value of 0 0.016. So when you decide to use a, 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 a decision for the treatment upfront with the rest wild type, you can choose the chemotherapy with either cetuximab, panitumumab. Still, we have in fit patient the triplet with BEVA. And this is for the first line, as I'm talking on the, the patient with mutated RAS. I will talk later about this. But those with a good performance, we can choose the chemo with anti-VHF. Uh, So the RAS mutated, as you can see, the patient with the RAS mutated uh, subgroup, if you compare this at the RAS wild, and this is the BRAF uh, mutated group, the RAS mutated, they have a, a, a prognosis in between. So they are worse than the RAS wild, but they are better than the uh, BRAF. So they are in between uh, the RAS wild and the BRAF mutated group. One issue I want to talk about the NRAS mutation. What is the significance of NRAS? Although NRAS represents 3% of category of patients, but has a worse outcome as you can see from this uh, curve. So if you compare NRAS to KRAS, significantly it is worse. And if you compare NRAS to BRAF, you can see there is no outcome in the uh, uh, survival uh, between the NRAS mutation and BRAF mutation. And this is a pooled analysis from uh, retrospective data. What about the upfront therapy of patients with RAS mutation? Whether to use the doublet or triplet, what is the best? And this is from the TRIBE trial. You can see here the combination of triplet with BEVA versus doublet. There is no significant improvement if you use uh, the triplet in patients with uh, uh, mutated RAS. And this is a meta-analysis for all chemotherapy in mutated RAS patients. The use of the chemotherapy with BEVA versus chemotherapy significantly improve progression-free survival. But if you look at the overall survival, there is no improvement in the overall survival with the use of BEVA chemo versus chemo only. 
And again, what about maintenance therapy in patient with RAS mutated? If you see there, the RAS wild type, you can use in the maintenance either fluoropyrimidine based regimen or BEVA, and there is no difference, and they are superior to uh, no treatment. But in the RAS mutated group, you can see only the combination of the BEVA and fluoropyrimidine is superior to either no treatment or single agent BEVA. So in the RAS mutated, the combination is the standard of care. What about the BRAF mutated patients? The BRAF, as you can see in all categories, either first, second, third, or fourth line, these are the BRAF, they have a worse outcome than the all comers. This is the BRAF as, and the only data for the first line till now we have from the TRIBE trial, based on 28 patients only, as you can see, randomized, and you can see the different overall survival if you use full Foxiri with BEVA versus full Firi BEVA. 19 months versus 10.7 months. Although this was not statistically significant, it is numerically uh, higher only. And based on this the, uh, data only, the BRAF mutation for Foxiri BEVA was approved in the guidelines. What about right and left? Talking about right and left, as you know, right, they have 40% of the patients extending up to splenic fracture. They have more BRAF mutated. KRAS may be equivocal, but they are less sensitive to chemo and targeted therapy because they have less expression of ERCC1 and VHFR2 receptors. And the, all of these patients have higher percentage of MSI patients and they present always in advanced disease with peritoneal metastasis. The CLGB trial showed in total that the right have a worse prognosis than the left, as you can see here. The outcome is survival in the right 19.4 months versus the left 33.3 months with significant p-value. And if you apply treatment with the target therapy, on the right side, the combination in the patient with RAS wild with cetuximab showed an inferior survival, as you can see here, compared to BEVA. And in the left side, the cetuximab with chemotherapy showed superiority, reaching 36 months on the left side as the median survivors is 16 months on the right side. So on the right side, don't use the anti-epidermal growth factor with chemo in the first line only, but in the second, third line, we have no data to support not to use. This is a meta-analysis from 66 studies, and you can see 1.4 million patients encountered in this meta-analysis in the JAMA Oncology published. And you can see the use of the, uh, uh, the difference between right and left, there is a 20% reduced risk of death for cancer arising on the left side. Again, this is a huge data. And if you want to apply the same for patient with RAS mutation, if there is a difference between right and left, actually from this study, there is no difference in the outcome between right and left in patients as overall survival in patient with mutated RAS uh, group. What about the recent advances, our updates? First, the MSI high, and this is from the ASCO recently, the Keynote 177, the use of pembrolizumab versus standard chemo in upfront therapy in patient with aesthetic colorectal cancer that they never received any therapy. It is a randomized phase two, one to one, as you can see here. And the outcome is the progression-free survival. And the study met its primary endpoint as progression-free survival with a median of 16.5 versus 8.2 months. And significant p-value had a ratio 0 0.60. Just remember that in the first six months in the Pembro arm, they have a worse outcome, as you can see here, more deaths in the uh, progression in the uh, uh, Pembro arm. 
And this is uh, uh, an abstract from ASCO also uh, from the Checkmate 142 trial for a patient with the 45 uh, patients using the combination of Nevo and Lodos Epi upfront in patient with uh, metastatic colorectal. And you can see there is significant in improvement in progression free and overall survival and also response rate. What about the resectable, liver resectable metastatic colorectal cancer? And this is the old data from the ERTC trial showed uh, giving perioperative chemo followed by surgery, followed by post-operative chemo with full FOX versus surgery alone. The data showed an improvement in disease-free survival uh, and no improvement in overall survival. And these are all trials that are published to give chemotherapy either perioperative or post-operative after liver resection for patients that never received chemotherapy before. And all the trial did not show any improvement in survival, as you can see, only uh, progression-free survival. The Japanese uh, 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 GCOG, the Japanese uh, clinical oncology group, uh, randomized patient for upper, uh, who had up front resection. And those patients did not receive any previous chemotherapy or any ablation therapy to either post-op chemotherapy with 12 cycles of modified Folfox versus observation. The primary endpoint was the disease-free survival, and the study was positive because it met its primary endpoint, end which is the disease-free survival. But the surprise, the difference between the chemotherapy and the control is very wide. The chemotherapy showed disease-free of uh, five years, while the observation showed only 1.5 year uh, as disease-free survival. And the surprise and the secondary endpoint, the patients as overall survival showed a worse outcome in patients who have uh, received chemotherapy. Uh, worse outcome as survival compared to the uh, observation. And the summary of the trial, although we have more side effect in the chemotherapy, but the trial is a positive for the primary endpoint as disease-free survival, but we have impairment overall survival as the secondary endpoint. And the difference is very wide. And if you compare it to the ORTC, which is accounted between 16 and 11 months only, this is a very wide five years versus 1.5 years. And uh, that, uh, the, the discussant uh, have several questions like that this study changed the current standard of care. They said no, particularly in synchronous metastatic disease. Uh, we still recommend adjuvant or peri perioperative chemotherapy. The problem in the metachronous uh, metastatic uh, disease to the liver because they have a lot of uh, uh, issues like received previously chemotherapy comorbidities and several issues to be discussed. In this study, the adjuvant therapy did improve overall survival, uh, but we don't have data about the biomarkers as we see, and uh, the preoperative chemo may still be used to test the biological effect while the, the study, while the tumor is there and to see how the patients will react to this chemotherapy. Don't forget the trial, the new EPOC trial that uh, uh, presented before. And in the new EPOC trial, they used the combination chemotherapy with cetuximab upfront for a patient with resectable and borderline resectable liver disease followed by chemotherapy and cetuximab in the adjuvant setting. And as you can see, there is no improvement in progression-free survival, but those who received chemotherapy and cetuximab, they have a worse outcome in uh, patients uh, versus observation only. So be remembered that the use of cetuximab and chemo post-resection may have a worse outcome. The treatment of elderly is very interesting. Previously, we have the Valentino trial comparing the maintenance therapy uh, with uh, uh, panitumumab versus 5-FU and panitumumab, and the combination is better than single agent. 
the PANDA trial, which is presented in the ASCO also, compared the combination of full FOX with the panitumumab versus the fluoropyrimidine with the panitumumab in elderly patient. You can see the result of the trial here. There is no difference in the progression-free survival between the full FOX panitu versus the 5 of you locovorin panitumumab. More toxicity with the full FOX arm, as you can see, and uh, uh, less tolerance with the full FOX among the elderly. And if you compare with the previous trials, which mainly the AVEX trial, we don't have with the PANDA trial the overall survival, as you can see, but with the AVEX, we have capsaicin beva is superior to capsaicin. And the median progression, although it is equal in both arms here in the AVEX trial, the use of combination is superior. And the overall response, which is the higher here significantly, but there is no difference between the full FOX and fluorouracil and panitumum with panitumumab, but it is more higher with the use than the use of bevacizumab. And as you can see, the uh, side effect, mainly the rash, diarrhea, neutropenia, here, more the diarrhea compared to the full FOX with, than the 5FU, as you can see here. And the difference here we can find in the AVIC, the hand food syndrome and less diarrhea in this category of patients. And here, you don't forget the right and left when you decide to use the uh, anti-epidermal gross factor of chemo as upfront therapy. In the FIRE uh, trial, this is the data from the FIRE trial, FIRE 3 trial, showed the same effect of the right and left in the elderly patients and better outcome with cetuximab fulfiri in the uh, elderly on the left side. And uh, the discussant uh, have many questions, uh, like would we expect similar results in less fit patient? Uh, maybe. and uh, Still, I would still avoid the first line with anti-epidermal in the right side, and still will consider for fit patient uh, the use of full fox, uh, full fox with uh, either both, but not the right side uh, with anti-epidermal gross factor. And for less fit elderly patient with left-sided RAS, BRAF wild type metastatic disease, uh, maybe the five a uh, few locovorin panitumab is a good option. So in conclusion, therapy in metastatic colorectal cancer should be tailored according to the individual patient tumor and molecular characteristics. RAS and VRF mutation beside MSI uh, status should be determined before starting the first line therapy. As the aim of first line treatment metastatic colorectal should be discussed in MDT board and with the patient to decide on the right therapy for the right uh, patient. I would like to thank you and stop here. Thank you, Dr. Ali, as always, sharp and to the point. And thank you because you stick exactly also to the time. So as you all know that uh, Professor uh, Ali Shamsuddin, he is uh, uh, Dr. Ali Shamsuddin, he is professor of clinical medicine and he's the director of GI and GU uh, department at uh, in, uh, AUB, the American University of Beirut. Uh, so now uh, we'll start with uh, Dr. and Professor Fadi Farahat. Are you with us, Dr. Fadi? Yes, I'm with us. The family yet to okay. arrive. As, as you know, Dr. Fadi Farahat will talk uh, about which therapy after relapse of the first line uh, treatment in metastatic colorectal uh, cancer. Please, Dr. Fadi. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sami. Can you see my, my uh, screen? Yes. 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 So, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for your participation. Participation uh, and uh, before starting, I'll tell you that soon we will send you all the program, which is uh, along the the the, 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 the upcoming matters. So I resume. I would like to uh, make a small sentence which 
will uh, resume what uh, what should be the selection. In my opinion, the selection of an optimal first-line chemotherapy is the most important treatment decision for the choice of the second-line treatment. Why? Because as Dr. Ali Shamsuddin uh, told you, when you go for, for, for a choice for the first line, you are really uh, uh, fragment, uh, uh, dissecting the tumor and knowing very well how to do that. What are the factors that will help you? It's the molecular and genetic phenotype of the tumor, like the high mismatch repair, deficiency or proficiency, like the genomic uh, 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 analysis, BRAF, HER2, and others. And uh, what can be other, uh, another factor is the prior treatment with the VEGF or EGFR. It's the type of progression. It's a quick pro progression or a slow progression. Is it the, second, uh, the type of the second line that will be decided and we will compare. And then after it's the toxicity, usually also the toxicity. Uh, just a slide that you know very well. Nowadays, we look to the colorectal cancer as we looked at a time, we look at a time for the breast cancer, and this is based on the molecular pathology mainly. So we have different colorectal cancer. It's not one disease, it's different diseases, molecular. What about the MSI? Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Shamsuddin told you that nowadays we have an approval for pembrolizumab in, in, in deficiency patient, mismatch repair deficiency, and a combination of nevo EP. And in, if you have a, 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 a now an approval in the first line, but in the second line, you might use it if you skip it in the first line. So we have many patients that received the immunotherapy because there were MSI high uh, metastatic colorectal cancer and they didn't answer, they didn't respond, they responded only to the immunotherapy. So yes, it's very important to, for the decision. Also, we will uh, talk about the genomic analysis, the BRF mutation. We know very well that this mutation will be, uh, uh, will be uh, fi found in, in young patients, male, more the left than uh, and rectum. Uh, and we know that it will impact uh, the results of the treatment because it's a predictive for the treatment. When predictive, it means that it will show if this treatment will work. And you can see here that in yellow, in orange, they add the, the, when we add the anti-BRAF uh, to the backbone chemotherapy IC, you see that it's really, really doing better. So yes, we have to think about that. And as Dr. Ali mentioned, and as you know very well, in the Velour trial, uh, the Afriva said, showed that in BRAF patients, for some reason that we don't know yet, for the mutated patient, there is a better response uh, uh, with the aflivacet. And uh, nowadays, if you want to, to treat a BRAF patient, you have uh, to use the approved Bayacon, Bayacon trial, uh, phase three trial drugs. Uh, so as you know, this trial compared the patients uh, with colorectal metastatic with BRAF mutation um, uh, that received either triplet therapy with, uh, with anti-MEC and anti uh, RAF plus uh, anti-EGFR, cetuximab plus encorafinib and binetinib, or double therapy with encorafinib and cetuximab compared to the classical uh, uh, chemotherapy. And when we go we, uh, to, to, the, to, to evaluate the response, we see that the overall survival in the triplet was better than the control and also in the doublet. So again, it shows that we have to use this uh, mutational uh, driver uh, 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 gene in order uh, to inhibit the tumor and to get a better uh, uh, possibility of surviving. So adding the anti-MEC, anti-RAF to the cetuximab is increasing survival in such patients. And you can see all subgroups are really in favor of the treatment for triplet. So now we know that the triplet uh, 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 medication is the adequate medication and such indication, BRAF mutated metastatic colorectal cancer. And it's amazing, but now HER2 is everywhere. We used to relate the HER2 gene uh, to breast cancer. Now it's everywhere. It's in lung, it's in gastric for sure, and now in colorectal. And also it's important to, to, uh, to do this testing whenever you can, if you can do it, because when there is an amplification, 
like in red here, the outcome is worse, the PFS is worse, and the survival is, is worse compared to those who do not have the amplification. So getting an amplification will worsen the diagnosis. And uh, uh, while receiving the treatment will is improve uh, the results, and it's the uh, pathway phase two trial uh, where we, we can confirm that. And there is a lot of, of, of trial ongoing and uh, we know now that the, the, the HER2 uh, mutation, or sorry, HER2 amplification, mutation is totally different. The HER2 amplification uh, is, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is a predictive uh, element for the uh, anti-HER2 treatment like TDM, pertuzumab, TDM, tucatinib, with a very promising, promising result for tucatinib. So we know that if we have HER2, in second line, we have to use this treatment. And there is many others mutation which might be rayli and track if fusion, we know very well, alk fusion, ROS fusion, red fusion, we used in lung cancer, but it might be even in colorectal cancer. And it's, it, there is another also, uh, another mutation. Look to the good response when you use the really inhibition, the adequate inhibition like the antractinib against the antrac or the serotinib against the alk. So, it's rare, very rare, but these cases are the patients that are not responding at all for us. And novel genomic markers, yes, there is a still coming, like the MET amplification IATM. What's the aim here? The aim is to say that if you have a resistance in first line, or if you can do it, please check before the second line for abnormal, uh, for unusual uh, alteration, unusual mutation or amplification. Also, another factor that might impact uh, the, the choice of the treatment is the prior treatment with VEGF or EGFR. And I think also that in the previous presentation, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, approached. Uh, so uh, you can see that if you use the anti, should be used the anti-EGFR followed by the anti-VEGF or the anti-VEGF followed by the anti-EGFR. Uh, you can see that the anti-EGFR after anti-VEGF uh, is uh, uh, really uh, influenced, uh, influencing the second line. Uh, so the VEGF levels rise during the bifazuzumab treatment uh, in uh, the uh, colorectal cancer. And we know that uh, the treatment uh, with uh, uh, anti-VEGF will inhibit uh, the efficacy of anti-EGFR. And we know that this will reduce the subsequent benefit of anti-EGFR, as you can see, if you use no bevazuzumab in the first line, you will get more and better result than in the, uh, uh, if, you, if you use the bevazuzumab. The red is better than the blue. And remark, you can also observe here that for the patient who had re received in the first line cetuximab, uh, received first line cetuximab, uh, got a better uh, PFS compared to the bifazuzumab. So yes, we have to use cetuximab for sure in uh, KRAS, uh, NRAS, wild type. So yes, we have to choose this uh, type of uh, uh, sequence, cetuximab followed by anti-VEGF followed by third line in uh, KRAS, NRAS, wild type, because we have a better overall survival compared to other lines. And uh, also uh, the progression, uh, faster progression is important after VEGF because uh, it was shown not all the trials uh, uh, got, uh, and got an evaluation uh, of these uh, patients with, uh, with, uh, uh, with a quick uh, progression. So uh, let's go now to the choice. What do we have as second line? Look to the tab, to the tab here you can see that the uh, chemotherapy in second line might be either bevazuzumab, as in the uh, TML trial, or VELU, uh, or uh, 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 as in the VELU AF, uh, it, it can be the aflivacet, uh, or it can be the ramisurimab in the uh, arm with RAISE, in the, the RAISE trial. And the median overall survival, the hazard ratio is almost the same, uh, look, guys, I, I will take a second. My family arrived. And uh, so, uh, so uh, you can see that the hazard ratio is almost the same 
meaning that there is no difference between this uh, trial concerning the overall survival, but the PFS, which is almost the same, is significant. And if you look to the response rate, that's why important. Uh, 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 by the way, it's a supported trial by San, a supported presentation by Sanofi, but it reflects my opinion. So we look here to the response rate. We can find that the response rate is better in the arm of Aplivacet, 19.8 versus 11, while the other are showing the same response rate. And in, pra and in practice, it's a true. We saw how a quick and higher is the, the response. So whenever you, know, you need a debulking or you need a quick control, you have to go for the Aplivacet. set. Uh, now, uh, the Ramesurumab, the the, the Ramesurumab uh, uh, we have data concerning the overall survival from the race trial showing an improvement with a hazard ratio of 0, uh, 084. It's not really uh, fantastic, but that's what we have. At least we have something with a better PFS also. And if we look to the Afliverset, uh, in the Velour trial, which is a trial uh, having as uh, overall survival uh, uh, benefit the, the primary endpoint, uh, we can see that it, it includes patients uh, with, uh, with 18 years and uh, uh, older, the ECOG was PS02, I will not go through it. Uh, so it, it included all the category of patient in second line with good, uh, uh, with good performance status, receiving either Bevazuzimab, uh, but not Irinotikan. Why? Because Irinotikan should be uh, administered with the treatment. And as you can see, a huge number of patients uh, that received uh, the Afliverset versus, pl uh, versus placebo plus chemotherapy, and they received the treatment till disease progression and, uh, and or unacceptable toxicity. And you can see that the overall survival here was, uh, was uh, uh, sustained uh, for the first year, the second, and even after, and the delta was increasing, which means that we are really uh, doing better when we uh, give this treatment, and it's not an sorry, it's sustained. And what's amazing, again, in the Velour trial, you can see that the objective response rate is higher in the arm of Avliverset versus placebo, which also, again, uh, has really observed in our practice. Busy slide, but the adverse event, unlike, unlike what uh, I, I used to hear in the, in the conferences, the Avliverset is well tolerable, and we have a lot of patients receiving the drug. So the conclusion was, in this trial that overall survival benefit is here, significant p-value, almost 20% reduction of deaths. PFS is good and overall response rate uh, is, is in favor of the Afliver set. Excellent, excellent. And what now we are aiming to get is a more and more real world data. Why? Because it's, it confirms what we have and it's the real practice, the real life. So the Velour, uh, 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 there was a, 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 a studying further for the Velour trial showing the maintenance, the, the confirmation of the benefit in overall survival. And then after there has been a many trial, I will not go through it retrospective review, or it was some, some data prospectively and some data even comparing retrospectively uh, but you know it's a retrospective analysis of Bevazuzumab to Avliverset and concluding that really uh, the, uh, the addition of Avliverset is increasing uh, the chances for the patients uh, to be uh, uh, controlled uh, for more and more times. As you can see, the difference uh, is, is between the Bevazuzumab in blue and the Avliverset backbone therapy is almost five months, but it's, it's, uh, it's not a, a prospective analysis. So the conclusion of the Velour trial is that the Folfury plus Avliva set should be, uh, should be used because it's confirmed by the uh, real world data and it was in the phase three Velour trial confirming the benefit in overall survival. So in conclusion, I will go to tell what I had initially showed. The optimal first line chemotherapy is important for the second line choice second line choice of treatment and the factors in choosing second line treatment are the molecular and genetic phenotype high mismatch repair the MSI high mismatch repair uh, uh, 
mismatch repair deficiency, sorry, mismatch repair deficiency, BRAF mutation, HER2 amplification, uh, RAT, ROS, ALK, etc. It's the first line choice and you have to, uh, to choose wisely your first line. The, uh, the rapidity of the progression, you have to choose the more aggressive. Uh, the type of second line, it, you have to choose it upon all what you have seen and the toxicity. But I consider that oncology, really oncology, it's the art of controlling, uh, of controlling uh, adverse events. So when you patient, you ask him not only if you want a better response, you ask him what kind of adverse event you want. And we know and we, we are good enough to control symptoms. With that, I finish by telling that the future will, will, uh, will be similar to the Colomate trial. We have to do, in my opinion, whenever we can, the genomic profiling of the tumor in order to decide our strategy immediately. And with that, I finish uh, my presentation. And I would like to tell you that my family arrived from Canada and this, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that they are here with me. Thank you very much. And I leave the floor to the chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fadi. You have three minutes to give and take hugs and will be back with us within two or three minutes. And go, go, uh, and alhamdulillah, salam at home. Uh, now uh, we have a second round for the panelist uh, discussion, and it's my pleasure to present Dr. Lalla Kautar Al Hassani, uh, consultant oncologist at National Institute of Oncology Hassan Oncology Center in Morocco, Rabat, Morocco. And uh, our friend Dr. Ahmed Younes is hematology oncologist at Central Military Hospital in Lebanon. Please, the floor is yours, panelists. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Sami and Dr. Farhat for the invitation. It's always great to see you, even if it is in virtual. And alhamdulillah, al salama, Dr. Farhat for family, for Dr. Farhat's family. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, your nice present and complete presentation. And I think we have uh, some questions from the audience. And we have some uh, hands rising. Dr. Susat, Susanata Kumar Sahu would like to ask a question. So please. Or Dr. Isra Musa, are you here? No, okay. So there is a question uh, from Dr. Hani Victor. Well, it's about locally advanced rectal cancer. Uh, is it better to treat locally advanced rectal cancer like early uh, with RCC or like metastatic with adding um, targeted therapy? Talking about rectal cancer as locally advanced, not metastatic. Yes. That's and you know, rectal cancer is different completely. So you need to incorporate uh, the uh, perioperative uh, chemo radiation or total neoadjuvant therapy with the perioperative radiotherapy, either short course or chemo, followed by chemotherapy, then surgery. So this is the locally advanced uh, rectal cancer. Yes, totally agree. So the radiotherapy is a part of the treatment because we are not talking about metastatic rectal cancer. It's locally advanced where we have to try to control it locally with radiation and chemotherapy and uh, send the patient for surgery. Yes, right. Um, I'm looking for other questions from the audience. Well, there is... We don't have no. questions from the audience. Yeah, I have raising hands, but um, ca ca I don't hear them, okay? So I have uh, another question. So the Keynote uh, 177 will lead to change, uh, to practice changing. And uh, I, do you have the approval for uh, Pembro in first line in your country for MSI high? Uh, till now, we are using the uh, PEMPRO for uh, second line. Uh, 
for MSI high tumors, and we have very good experience with very good uh, results. Yeah. Uh, uh, for first line, we have only one patient uh, after uh, liver resection, and uh, because she uh, had only very uh, two cycles only, uh, and then she had obstruction, so we have to use. Uh, uh, she progressed rapidly within a month of uh, this is we'll consider her as first line so just received two cycles and now she is uh, one and a half year with complete response yes great we have a great result with immunotherapy like uh, in uh, lung or breast I so now to, i would like to add a question uh do you think that do you have any preference dr shamsetti between nivolumab or pembrolizumab in second line, not in first. We don't have results for Nivo. But we had some cases, and we know that nivolumab was approved in second line, MSI high. So uh, my experience with Nivo was good, but it's not a big one. Do you have any uh, comment on this, uh, Dr. I don't think uh, we have any data to compare between both. Uh, uh, any, uh, both are approved. Both, both are approved for first uh, for second line, and it depends on the physician choice. I think I think so. Okay, so it's equal. Hello, hello. Um, if, if I may uh, ask a question and uh, add a comment. Uh, initially, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Khatib for uh, chairing this uh, session and the excellent three uh, presentations. Uh, if I may raise a basic kind of a basic question regarding the second line setting, we know all the backbone chemotherapy and the second line. If we give full Fox, automatically it is a trend to give full theory with whatever uh, else. But there, there is a meta-analysis on five randomized control trials showing no overall uh, survival. Um, a difference between the Fulfiri or uh, Erinotica uh, alone. But we have the trend to use the Fulfiri protocol with other uh, targeted therapy. Uh, sh uh, should we change this or um, we just need to keep uh, this trend? I know the biological agents, the uh, combination trials, most of them combined with the Fulfiri. But this remind me with the uh, uh, multiple myeloma, DEXA, backbone. Is it the same that we need uh, to use five of you uh, with each subsequent therapy in the, in the second line setting? What do you think? The question for whom is? Uh, uh, Fadi or Ali, <laughs> most hayalam, welcome. Anna, if you allow me, Dr. Shamsuddin, uh, uh, first of all, we used to extrapolate in, uh, in oncology. So you know that we used to, uh, to change the platinum therapy in some cases. And uh, even uh, we, we before... Uh, we lost Dr. Fadi. Yes, I think he is in the uh, Dr. Ali, uh, if, you, if you have a comment on that. Dr. Ali? Yes, I'm back with you. Uh, did you hear my, my question? No, I, I lost the connection. Yeah, yeah, regarding the second line setting, we always give, if we give full fox in the first line with whatever combination, we use the full theory. But there is a meta-analysis on five uh, randomized control trials showing no overall survival difference of full theory compared to erinotica single agent. So should we, be, should we change that or uh, what do you comment? Uh, the first, uh, uh, yes, I agree with you. There is no uh, advantage of using irinotecan, but you have to check the irinotecan dose that was higher than the uh, used uh, in uh, Fulfiri. So we get more toxicity with irinotecan with higher doses, reaching 200 or 225 or 250 per meter square. So it is more toxicity uh, with the irinotecan specific, the delayed diarrhea that occur after seven 
uh, days, five to seven days, and we were facing this a lot in the uh, past when you use single agent irene tican. Uh, and uh, if you have a, a, a phase three randomized trial, it is superior as a result to meta-analysis. This is why we use the data from the phase three randomized, right? Tornigan trial as uh, the basic data for comparing full Fox versus full theory or vice versa. Dr. Yunis, can I yeah. talk? Can I, yeah, I wanted to say that we extrapolate a lot in oncology. Uh, so I think that you, you have to give the, uh, we have the opportunity to modify and uh, to use the data. We already uh, prescribed for a long time the cetuximab in maintenance while we didn't have any data. And we did that based on the bevacizumab data and maintenance. So changing the, the chemotherapy is really, uh, should be personalized. It's related to the uh, for efficacy for sure it's equal almost but also the the patient's uh, uh, symptoms the patient's uh, you know the toxicity profile also because aranticin has a completely different profile than eloxatine and that will play an important role but yes there is no preference and and personally in some cases i change the i keep the backbone chemotherapy for some specific reason and i change the monoclonal antibody Okay. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Afadi. Dr. Laila, I think we have more, more questions. Question. Yes. And we have a question from Nermin Bahi. Um, thank you so much, dear professor. If a patient is Kira's mutant right side uh, tumor and received Avastin Folfox progress, can she receive Zalfra Folfiri or it is a failure of anti angiogeny? I think it's a good question. Dr. Fadi Farhad, Dr. Farhad, can you so hear us? Question, if the patient received in first line for right-sided. Yes. Uh, yes. Avastin plus chemo and uh, she progressed. Can we give her a, a Zaltra plus chemo or it is a failure of anti-angiogenesis? Already there is a data uh, showing that you can give uh, uh, bevazuzumab in second line after first line bevazuzumab as I showed it in the, in yes. the slides and if as per the Velour trial for sure you can use aflibercet after using bevazuzumab. Now yes. you have to pay attention that ramisurumab cannot be used after, set, uh, after uh, cetuximab because the trial was only with after bevazuzumab. So again aflibercet can use and the, uh, yani, in all, uh, whatever was the first line, it can be used after cetuximab or after bevazuzumab. I have a comment here. If you dissect the TML trial, the uh, improvement on the survival with the con of bevazuzumab and TML is related to the white type only and in the RAS mutated, the bevacizumab survival disappeared. So this is a failure of anti-angiogenic therapy in the second. For the ramesirumab, the advantage of uh, RACE trial, the ramesirumab, that two thirds of the patient in the RACE trial, they included in patients who are progressed on anti-angiogenic therapy as first line, resistant to anti-angiogenic within three months of stopping or on anti-angiogenic therapy. So these are the minor difference between the different trials. But the only trial that showed the difference between the RAS mutated and RAS wild as continuation of anti-angiogenic therapy is in the TML trial. And it failed to show the outcome as survival with the RAS mutated. This will raise another question, Dr. Shamsuddin, about uh, the, uh, the importance or the real role of bevazuzumab in right-sided colon tumor, because it's a debate, you know, as even in some guidelines, they put the plus minus bevazuzumab. So should we use monoclonal antibody independently uh, uh, from the economic uh, uh, toxicity? 
should we use bevacizumab in first line in right-sided tumors? In your opinion, knowing that they are almost uh, always RAS mutated. Uh, What's your opinion? Uh, according from the TRIBE 2 trial, as uh, we presented, the triplet with the BEVA is superior. So uh, if the patient is fit enough to receive the triplet, I will recommend it. If it's triplet, but not doublet, what about doublet chemotherapy plus bevazuzumab? According to uh, CLGB trial, still it has showed a significant improvement on the right side with BEVA. Okay, NCCM guidelines, it showed they write that plus minus, why? I know, I know, but, uh, but it is still positive trial, the CLGB. Okay. Don't, rem don't forget that it's an education. That is a question. That's why we have to ask this question. Thank you. Sure. Dora, Laila, we have the last question. Well, yes. A and new patient. Yes, new patient, locally advanced rectal cancer with suspected three and four liver metastasis. Start chemo or chemo radiotherapy to rectal, and after that, try for surgical liver meds plus primary. So this, this patient has has limited uh, liver uh, disease, yes. and uh, uh, usually this means he has systemic disease. So if the patient uh, fit enough, you can use the chemotherapy up front. This is uh, according to the data from the ERTC trial uh, and now the Japanese trial. So using neoadjuvant and in the rest period of the uh, chemotherapy uh, after three months uh, treatment, I will use a short course radiation therapy, five days only to control the rectal. And then we'll go for first usually uh, because the liver surgery is uh, a clean surgery, easy. I will go for the liver surgery first for residual disease, then subsequently for rectal surgery. In two separate surgeries or in the same surgery? Two separate surgeries. Yes. Well, it depends also on the extent of liver disease. Uh, uh, but I mean, we, said from, we, we said it is limited from the start. Y yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think thank there is no more you. questions. I would like to thank all of you. And before uh, uh, giving uh, the closure uh, remarks to my friend, Dr. Fadi Farahat, just I would like uh, to thank all uh, speakers, panelists, and the participants. Today we got it. We finished really on time uh, due to the strict regulation to the speakers that they give really the the exact time. Uh, just I would like to announce that our next course will be in hematology cancer uh, on the 23rd of June, next Tuesday. And uh, Dr. Fadi, floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, again, thank you for staying with us. The number is almost it always the same. We have 135 participants now. 134 now. It's okay. Uh, I wanted to say that because, uh, because we are really uh, limited in time, uh, we decided uh, that after the session, we will take 30 minutes with those who would like to stay. And we would like to be sharing cases. So if you have any case uh, related to the topic, you can send it three days before and we can discuss it uh, uh, after uh, the, the, with, the, with the TOL, with the specialist running. We will send a, a letter concerning uh, this, uh, uh, this idea that we, we are uh, initiating. And we, uh, you, we will see you, hopefully see you the next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Thank you for the speakers. Thank you for the panelists. It was really a pleasure. And hope we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Salame. Lal Aile. Fadi. And Salam. Lal Fadi. Lal Aile. Fadi. Salam. Lal Jamia. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.